Uh, in this video, we are going to go over some of the code provisions in uh, NZS 3404, which is the New Zealand Steel Standard, um, and how those code provisions deal with uh, determining the shear capacity of a section. And uh, so for all of what we'll run through in this video, it's really going to be focused on unstiffened web. So these are, uh, you know, for example, if, if you have a, a typical UB, so an I section, and um, you subject it to some bending and you want to know, well, how much shear can it take? Uh, that's what we're going to go over uh, in this video. So um, as we had pointed out in our previous video, um, the things that we really need to f determine before we can find a capacity is um, whether we will undergo shear buckling or not. Um, and you know, basically, will we undergo shear buckling prior to uh, reaching the full plastic, um, basically yielding the full depth of the web? Um, and then uh, if we find that we aren't, uh, and that we, we can reach that plasticity, uh, we need to determine, you know, based upon our shear stress distribution, whether it's a uniform or non-uniform shear stress, uh, will then dictate what that capacity is. So uh, we'll just start jumping into this, and then we'll sort of do that, we'll break it down kind of step by step. Um, so our first step is uh, our, uh, our need to determine if the web will buckle. Prior to reaching the full plastic capacity. And so, I mean, essentially what this is, this is a slenderness check. So this is um, very similar to the, um, the slenderness checks, which we did when we looked at, uh, you know, bending section capacity and whether the, um, uh, the member uh, would, sorry, I'm uh, struggling here to, uh, uh, to, uh, write something different than what I'm speaking, so uh, give me just a second. Of the web. And so, yeah, this, as I said, this is very similar to the slenderness check that we did for uh, determining whether uh, a member in bending would um, have uh, local flange buckling um, or not. And so, uh, as I said, for an unstiffened web, uh, we're really looking at uh, this ratio here. So, uh, let's say, let me actually, we'll draw a little picture here just for um, some reference, uh, just so that the values that we have uh, will have a bit of, uh, you know, sort of pictorial meaning. So, we're interested in this value, D1 and the thickness of the web. So uh, this is just really a, a slenderness here. So um, if D1, so basically if the clear distance of the web uh, divided by the uh, thickness of the web uh, multiplied by the yield stress of that web over 250, that's less than or equal to 82, uh, we're going to say that that is a stocky web. Um, and so we, we have these two um, delineations, stocky and slender. And so slender will be anything which is a uh, you know, longer or skinnier, so that ratio. And so a slender web. Uh, will just be the uh, uh, the other uh, the converse of that. 
greater than 82. Um, now this uh, square root fy web over 250, um, just a reminder that this is, because these slenderness limits um, also account for things like uh, residual stresses from uh, the manufacturing process, um, there is a, uh, and they were all sort of determined when the uh, uh, the typical uh, yield stress of steel, which was manufactured in New Zealand and Australia, uh, was 250 MPa. So this is really just a um, a correction factor, which is on there. So uh, cool. This is sort of step number one. So we would determine whether it's a stocky or slender, uh, and that's a fairly easy um, delineation. Now. Uh, stocky uh, is sort of this is the the limit uh, no matter what uh, which is in the code um, but if we have a slender web um, uh, then we it's going to be a, a bit dependent upon whether um, you know we, so this uh, let me back up so for this limit here um, if we're, we're sort of stouter than this we will yield the entire plastic section, uh, the entire depth of the web, uh, before we we buckle it. And if he, and if it's greater than um, that, well, then we'll we'll reach some buckling. The code also puts an upper limit to how slender we can make our our webs, and uh, and that's what this sort of next part is. So slenderness. ratio of, well, we'll say not just webs, we'll call them slender webs. Slenderness ratio of slender webs is limited to um, either D1 over T sub W times FY web over 250 uh, less than or equal to 180 uh, if both ends of the web Are supported so that's really talking about you know we can have this really slender web um, say if we have a an I section where both ends of the web um, are supported um, or um, the the other case is if we have only one end supported. So, you know, if we have So say we have only one end of the web supported. So this, you know, uh, an example of that would be like a T-beam. Um, in that case, then our slenderness ratio is going to be D1 over T sub W FY of the web over 250. Um, has to be less than or equal to 90. So that you know sort of makes intuitive sense. If we're only supporting one web, then um, well, we're going to have half of the um, and we, we need to be you know, sort of twice as, as stocky as we would if we had sort of, uh, you know, two restraints. And that that's, you know, should also um, yeah, sort of line up with what we've done with um, sort of Euler buckling. All right. So this is that's our that's our first step determining just from the slenderness ratio if it's a stocky or a slender web. Um, then the next step is we need to actually just determine what the capacity is. So you know with shear, it's actually it's not that uh, not that challenging of a um, 
uh, of a calculation. Uh, the only bit which is a bit of a challenge is just sort of navigating through um, all of these different um, sort of criteria. So um, we say if a web is stocky, Uh, then our, our our steps are basically um, to determine uh, the shear stress distribution. And if it is uniform or non-uniform. And remember, whether it's uniform or non-uniform is going to be dependent upon the geometry of the section. So if we have a, you know, just a, a review from the previous video, uh, non-uniform sections, uh, essentially, uh, they don't have a flange or, or they have only one flange. Uniform sections, um, they have a flange um, of the same size, uh, both um, at the top and the bottom uh, in, in the direction in which they're being loaded. So again, this uniform, non-uniform is all, all driven by geometry. So, um, so this is, this is our step. So you know, we, we now have our sort of two, two roads we can go down. Um, the first one let's, is kind of our easiest, and this is really our base case, uh, which all of these other uh, sort of criteria uh, will modify this case and, and put some, some factor on top of it uh, in order for us to get a capacity. So um, if the section is stocky and has uniform stress stocky and uniform uh, then our governing equation is V star has to be less than or equal to phi v sub w. So phi in this case is equal to 0 0.9, uh, just like all member um, with um, uh, in, in, in NZS uh, 344. Um, v sub w equals 0 0.6 times Fy times the gross area of the web. And this one is for um, flat plates. So you know this is the this is the um, the, the shear for shear capacity we would get if um, you know we were looking at the web of an I section. Um, we'll just put down a, uh, a code reference here for you uh, just for, um, some, you know, posterity. Uh, this is coming from section 5.11.4.1. And then um, if we have, say, a circular uh, hollow section, uh, then we modify V sub W slightly. Um, so I'll just put here, you know, A sub W is the um, gross area of the web. And then for a circular hall section, uh, V sub W, uh, we essentially, we just put a, a modification onto it um, just to account for the fact that we, we don't have um, 
uh, purely uniform here with our circular cross section because of the um, geometry coming across. Um, so we, we've put this 0.36 factor on instead of uh, 0 0.6. Um, again, code equation, uh, code reference for you here. Uh, that's coming from 5.11.4.2. And uh, a sub e uh, simply equals the um, gross area um, of the section. So for, for stocky flat plates with uniform shear stress, um, we, we just take the area of the web um, while with a circular hollow section. Uh, we'll take the whole area, but then we put this factor on to account for the fact that uh, we have, um, uh, you know, the, the tops and bottoms aren't really giving much uh, shear stress uh, restraint. So uh, just to bring our, our picture back into here, um, so if uh, this I section, for example, uh, was stocky, uh, we would take just the, the area of the web here um, as our A sub W, uh, put uh, the 0 0.6 times Fy, and that gives us our capacity. So that gives us our stress times an area uh, that will equal a force. Uh, for V sub W here, uh, because uh, circular hollow sections have this sort of funny um, shear stress distribution, uh, essentially, the 0 0.36 is, is really just meaning that we only take uh, sort of this small portion um, in here uh, and, and count that towards our shear stress uh, shear capacity. Now, um, I, I, I think you know we've got the 0 0.6 Fy, which seems a little bit arbitrary, um, and then also in some. Um, Overseas codes, like in the U.S. code, the five factor is not, you know, 0 0.9, it's like 0 0.75. So, you know, why is this? Well, one, if you if you multiply 0 0.6 times 0 0.9, uh, you you come actually quite close to that 0 0.75. So, you know, if we uh, if we bring this up, uh, we're we're going to struggle to to really see that here. So we'll just go, you know, 0.9 times 0 0.6. Um, uh, we get you know zero point five, so we we've got a, a fairly uh, you know large reduction there. So you know that helps us keep us away from that uh, you know shear failure. Uh, but what's also interesting here is, and we'll just do this as a as an aside. Um, for a flat plate. And here, even with this aside, we'll, we'll draw this little line here just to sort of say that, you know, this is all the code equations. And, and this will be just a little bit of, you know, where we, we come up with the 0 0.6 factor. So for a flat plate uh, with uniform shear stress, Well, so if we have V sub W equals 0 0.6 Fy A sub W, well, that's the same as saying our uh, shear stress at yield times A sub W. Well, tau sub Y, that's again, we'll just write this down to be explicit. That's our yield shear stress. Um, and that's going to equal Fy over square root of 3. That's approximately 0 0.6 Fy. And that comes from um, von, Mies, uh, von Mies failure criterion. So, 
Um, I mean, that's uh, uh, it's kind of neat when you when you see something which is just sort of a, a straight, um, you know, mechanics of materials um, uh, requirement or, or 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 you know. Uh, phenomenon which is sort of makes its way into these uh, the code equations. So they're you know they're they're not just a, a point six pulled out of the air. There is something which goes into it um, simply from looking at the uh, the maximum shear stress. Um, and so I'll I'll also just draw you know just a little picture here to just uh, also illustrate a, another point uh, with these stocky webs. So if we have this I section um, and we draw some shear stress distribution. Um, we'll draw it just of the um, of the web, so it'll come out something like that, where um, you know this distance will be tau sub y, uh, and this is at the first yield uh, point of the section. Um, if we push it a little bit further, well, eventually we will yield the entire section, and that will all equal tau sub y, and this is a um, fully plastic point. Uh, we'll just shade those in just to make them show up a little bit better for you. Now, um, if you keep and if we if we think about the fact that um, if you you sort of integrate over um, this uh, stress distribution, you you're going to get a force. I mean, this you know you got tau sub y, a sub w. That's going to equal v sub w. And so if we look at if we think about these two as so as equivalent to um, you know uh, the force the which the section can you know. Uh, provide at uh, first yield versus the force it can provide uh, in shear resistance uh, when it goes fully plastic. We we notice that you know there's actually only a, a very small change between so uh, fully plastic. It's basically this um, little portion uh, here in the corners which uh, hasn't filled in yet. And so this is why um, you know the stress state that we're looking at. So of our ultimate limit state in shear. Um, we're still only taking the um, the point at yield because there's there's really only a very small change. Um, so it's only a small change in v sub w at first yield. versus fully plastic. So as I said, that's just kind of a, a little bit of an aside, um, something um, kind of interesting, but in it, it is should also be informative of, you know, where the 0.6 FY comes from and why we're using a um, sort of the yield equation uh, when it's really this stress state that we are designing for. So um, this was our, our sort of our first condition here, where if we have a, a stocky section, so it's got a um, you know slenderness ratio, which is less than 82, uh, and it has a uniform shear uh, distribution. So you know that uniform shear distribution would be like an I section, a box section, a circular section. Uh, channels which are... Um, loaded uh, perp uh, parallel to the uh, web also fall into that. So uh, then if we look at, um, you know, if the web is stocky and it's, uh, it's a non-uniform stress, so So what do we do? So say we've got a, a stocky web and um, say we've got a, a, a rectangular section or, or we have a, an I section which is loaded about its weak axis. 
um, you know, how do we how do we deal with that now? So um, if that is the case, then instead of you know v star of I mean less than or equal to phi uh, v sub w, which is just the essentially the the gross area of the um, of the web um, times the yield stress, we get v star has to be less than or equal to phi v sub v n, where um, v sub v n just equals two times v sub w over 0 0.9 plus f star vm or f star va. Uh, and all of that has to be less than or equal to v sub v of v sub w. Um, so we'll box that one up and again uh, this is coming from NZS 34045.11.3. Um, and so, uh, really, you know, this is a kind of a complicated equation, but if we look at it, um, you know, it, it's essentially modifying um, this visa W, uh, which we, we had in our uh, our for stocky web with a uniform shear stress where it's at 0 0.6 fy a sub w this v star or, or this f star v sub m is really just the um, maximum shear stress in the web and the f star uh, v sub a uh, is just the average uh, shear stress in the web. And so um, it's essentially you're just looking, this is... Um, you know, if, if this were, um, say, you know, 1 to 1, 0.92, um, you can see where we're essentially, you've got a nominally a 1, nominally a 1, cancel the 2. You can see where, where how this is essentially just a ratio of, of how close we are to a uniform shear stress distribution. So, you know, um, again, as an aside or for an example, um, uh, FV max uh, equals 1.5 FVA for a um, rectangular section. And I mean, you can, uh, and this is all supposed to be in you know, the code says, you know, just to work this out um, based upon a, uh, a rational analysis. So a first principles type of thing. So um, if you're to look at, you know, the shear, uh, you know, V over um, over A of the cross section uh, versus the um, shear uh, at the, um, the maximum for a rectangular cross section, you would get a factor of uh, 1.5. Um, and so, um, you know, for a, if we were to work this out for, say, a um, a rectangular cross section, we would get um, 1.5 plus 0 0.9. Uh, that's going to give us 2.4. So we'd have 2 divided by 2.4 uh, would give us uh, our V sub n capacity would be uh, 0 0.83 uh, for a rectangular cross section. Um, so V sub V n equals v sub w for for a rectangle and and i mean that kind of makes some sense you know remember this v sub vn or this v sub uh, you know w factor is really you think about that as a force and that's if our capacity is the internal force which can be generated 
uh, in order to balance the, the external shear which is being applied. Um, I mean, if we just look at these two cases of our uniform and our non-uniform, um, if we think about sort of the stress distribution, uh, you know, that area as being um, uh, equal to the force which is being applied, uh, which is resisting sort of this downward, well, you can see for a given force generated, you know, the shear stress distribution here is smaller than it is here due to that non-uniform uh, distribution uh, for for the same depth and uh, and and width. So say that uh, this rectangle here had the same width and the same depth as uh, this I section. Uh, it would only have um, 83 percent uh, based upon uh, of the capacity uh, based upon this equation here. All right. So you know that was our um, we we've now looked at. Uh, whether it is, uh, you know, for our stocky, uh, we've looked at our two conditions, whether it's uh, uniform or uh, non-uniform. Uh, now we just want to have a look at the slender webs. Uh, and we're only going to look at slender webs with a uh, uniform uh, stress distribution. So, um... So if the web is slender and a uniform stress, and we'll just abbreviate distribution. So if this is the case, then um, it, it's really just sort of a, uh, a, a factor of we we're going to pick out a slightly different um, equation. So it's going to be phi uh, v sub b. Uh, and V sub B, this is this is a, essentially stands for buckling. Because remember, if it's slender, um, you know, if it's slender, it has this uh, higher slenderness ratio. We're saying that it's going to buckle uh, before it yields, and so um, we will undergo flange. Uh, sorry, of uh, web local buckling, and so uh, that equals just phi times V sub B. Uh, is phi V sub B equals uh, phi times alpha v times v sub w. So again, you can see um, all we're really doing is we're just adding on a factor uh, to our v sub w, and that um, uh, alpha v simply equals 82 over d1 t sub w um, times fy of the web divided by 250 and that whole thing squared and that's in 3404 and 5.11.5.1 um, so you know this looks like uh, again like we've got kind of a, a funky equation going on, uh, but it looks really reminiscent of something we've already seen, um, you know, where we've got a, a slenderness ratio, uh, and if and 82 is our magic number uh, for our slenderness ratio, if we're uh, below that, it's a stocky web, if we're above that, it's a slender web, and so really all this alpha v uh, factor is doing is so it's looking at the ratio of how close is uh, the the web that the slender web that we're looking at how close is it to that um, uh, that limit and then um, you know uh, further away we have a, a greater so further away means we have a a more slender element so uh, the denominator gets bigger so the alpha v gets smaller which means that we're going to have a, a lower capacity. Uh, which we can handle before buckling occurs. Uh, and then the closer we are to that limit, uh, the closer we're going to be to the, the stocky web, so that full plasticity. So uh, those, are, those are really the three cases that we're uh, going to deal with. Um, stocky web with a, a uniform uh, shear stress distribution, which is just simply uh, V sub W equals 0 0.6 times uh, the yield stress of the web times the area of the web. Uh, if you have a circular hollow section, it becomes uh, 0.36. Um, the other 
uh, condition would be if we have a stocky web with a non-uniform stress. Uh, again, we're essentially just modifying that stocky uh, uniform stress um, equation uh, by looking at what the, um, uh, the range is between um, our maximum shear stress and the average stress in the web. And so, and I worked out a, a little example here for a rectangular cross section. And then for a slender and a uniform stress distribution, um, all we're doing is we're modifying that uh, uniform stress distribution stocky uh, equation by how close we are to the slenderness limit uh, with this equation, with this factor alpha v. So those are the three equations that we're going to look at. We're only going to do one more thing uh, with shear stress before we get into some examples and that is looking at the interaction between shear and bending moment. So um, we'll have uh, shear and bending moment interaction. So um, again, if I if I draw uh, you know a sort of simple little free body diagram here, um, which has some force and it's simply supported, well, if I draw the the shear force uh, diagram, shear force distribution, and um, I draw my bending moment distribution. Well, you know, we, if, if we think about this in terms of a stress state, well, you know, we have both bending and shear um, acting at a section uh, at any given time. Um, I mean, in fact, that's, that's kind of how we came up with our, our derivation. I mean, if we bring up our, our previous little um, diagram, uh, free body diagram for this, this derivation, um, you can see that, you know, if we've got, you have both... Um, the shear longitudinal shear, and we have this, um, you know, uh, normal stress coming from our bending stress. Well, how do we deal with um, how these two interact, and, and how do we um, account for that when we're looking at our capacity? Well, uh, fortunately, uh, it's typically not an issue. It's only really an issue uh, if we have really, really high um, moment demand relative to the section capacity. So, you know, we'll just put that here. So it's typically, um, not an issue. Uh, and we only consider it um, when um, our moment demand, m star, is uh, greater than or equal to 75% uh, of the section capacity. And, and, and note that this is a, a non-factored load. Um, so, I mean, that's where it it's only really becomes a, a big deal when, yeah, we have a, a, a lot, we're asking a lot out of the section in bending. And that makes sense given the fact that, you know, we're going to have this additional longitudinal stress uh, coming from shear. So, um, if that's the case, so, yeah, when um, this M star is, uh, is greater than or equal to 75% of the uh, section uh, bending capacity, uh, then our, um, our governing shear equation is uh, V star uh, less than or equal to phi V sub V M. And, and the V M is basically just shear moment interaction is, is how you should read that. So um, V sub V M equals uh, V sub V. So this V sub V is whether it's the, um, you know, your V sub V, your V sub VN, uh, V sub W. Uh, this is just what your, your normal shear capacity is. Um, 
and then you just multiply it by this uh, factor 2.2 minus 1.6 times m star over phi m of s. And this is n zs 3404 5.12.2 um, and, and that's it and it really um, if you were to plot this up um, sort of as um, you know M star over MS and V star over V sub V uh, you'd find that it plots sort of a, a, a boundary like that, where um, for really low uh, shear capacities, it's all right. Um, when this ratio is um, uh, sort of between, uh, you know, sort of greater than 0 0.75, then we start, uh, you know, dropping off a bit, and then we... Uh, uh, we, we, we can't count on our full shear um, capacity. So, um, but again, it, it's, it's a fairly um, straightforward uh, equation to use. Uh, and like I said, it's only really considered um, when uh, we have these really, really high um, uh, moment demands relative to what the section can, uh, can take. So um, that's how NZS 3404 um, uh, does shear design um, and like I said we, we sort of restricted ourselves to just um, either uh, to, to unstiffened webs here there, there's a whole whole bunch more you can look at stiffeners um, but that's sort of outside the, the scope of the course so just a quick recap uh, what we do is we we determine for the the web which is taking uh, so supporting the shear we determine whether, uh, from its slenderness ratio, whether it's stocky or slender. Um, and then from the uh, sort of shear stress distribution, we determine if that's uniform or if that is um, uh, non-uniform, uh, simply based on section geometry. Uh, if it's uniform, uh, 0 0.6 times Fy, V sub V, um, that's uniform and stocky, uh, stocky and non-uniform. Uh, we essentially just modify that visa v uh, based upon what the uh, sort of distribution ratio is, uh, so the maximum shear over the uh, area. And then if we have a slender web uh, with a uniform shear stress distribution, we just modify that uniform shear stress for a stocky web uh, based upon the um, slenderness ratio. So um, hopefully you found that uh, not too challenging. And uh, we will get on with a, um, a, a few different um, examples uh, coming up on how to um, sort of uh, put some of these equations in practice. All right. Uh, thanks for watching.